Light and hope. The ancient Greek language has many words for love to describe the different sorts of love there are. Brotherly love, family love, erotic love, self-love, Christian love, etc. I wish there were words in English to describe different sorts of hope. I have no idea how many church ministers and commentators have tried to define the certain hope we have as Christians as being different from hope in any other context. I've heard plenty. It is hard to define without a better vocabulary, and I honestly can't pretend to have a better explanation than their attempts, but let me give you mine. There is a phrase lodged in the random filing system in my brain that goes, nations are the stories they tell themselves. I was reminded of this recently when I read a review of a book called The Economics of Arrival, which quoted the Nigerian poet and novelist Ben Okri, saying, nations and peoples are largely the stories they feed themselves. If they tell themselves stories that are lies, they will suffer the consequences of those lies. If they tell themselves stories that face their own truths, they will free their histories for future flowerings. The book examines what happens when economic growth offers no growth in well-being and has damaging impacts, for example, to the environment or concentrating wealth among a few. However, the book does also contain a message of hope to build a sustainable, lasting home in this world of plenty. There is a topical relevance to this book and to the quote from Ben Okri when we consider our own, our own history in Great Britain and the way it has been re-examined this year with the tearing down of statues of players in that history. Are we the empire on which the sun never set, bringing development, prosperity and democracy to the world? Or are we exploiters of other peoples and their resources through military power, subjugation, and slavery. There are nuances to be acknowledged in both of these extremes, and maybe the truth does not lie at one end or the other, nor at some middle point, but at both extremes. The Old Testament Israelites had their story, their history, and it was one that God told them to remember, a story to tell their children and their children's children, so that it would not be forgotten. This was a story of God's promises and faithfulness. God promised Abraham that he would be the father of a nation and a blessing to many nations. God led the Israelites out of slavery to the land he promised them. God's promises came true for the Israelites. God remained faithful to his promises, even though the Israelites messed up and repeatedly broke their part of the covenant. And today, God's promises can be true for everyone through Jesus Christ. We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20, for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. This is why the Christian hope is certain. God does not break his promises. Let me pray, paraphrasing some verses from the letter to the Ephesians. I pray that through his spirit, God gives you the wisdom to see clearly and really understand who Christ is and all that he has done for you. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you will know the hope to which he has called you and how rich are the wonderful blessings he promises his people. I pray that you will begin to understand how incredibly great his power is to help those who believe in him. Amen.